We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Friends. <laughs> welcome back or welcome to our channel. It's Serena from the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. Today it was the first day of our study hall is what we're calling it this year <laughs> so um it was a good day um your girl is tired but before before i take a whole nap at the end of the day i thought maybe i would walk you through um how we keep our daily schedule i love our schedule i feel like it has been the same for so many years in the way in which um I have implemented it over the years have just been has just really been so life-giving to us every year and it makes it really simple for us to just kind of move things around as things change throughout the year which it often does so i just figured i would share with you what our schedule looks like um this year we are using slides like daily slides to get through our day many of you have requested that you'd like to see those daily slides and maybe a little bit of a tutorial about like how I put them together. So I do plan on doing that, but for right now, I'm just going to show you our daily schedule in general, what I used for us to work our way through our day to day and what we pretty much have used for many years. And we just kind of like, um, tweak and adjust it along the way. I have always used an iCal because I am an Apple teacher girl. Okay. <laughs> so I've used the iCal for ever in a decade, like an actual decade, because this is year 10 of me being homeschool mom and teacher. So I'm going to show you what I use for us to work our way through our day. Um, I use a color coded calendar on my iCal. It is great because I can sync it with all of my devices. So whatever I put into my computer, I can then access from my iPad, which means I can also sync to my phone and my watch. Okay. <laughs> so it is really helpful for me. I can even sync it to my Google Cal, which I keep like my business calendar and a couple of other different calendars, um, in the Google suite. So it's just really been great for me. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, I color code everything. So our homeschool days are coded, color coded green, color coded green. So when you see the calendar, you will see that all of the green blocks correspond to things that we have going on in our homeschool day. Woo, that was a lot to get out, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is my calendar. Okay. Um, like I said, everything in green is what we work through in our homeschool day. I love this because I can simply duplicate um, and plan out any specific block of time, which is basically what I do. It's basically just time blocking. Nothing super particular goes in here. It's just kind of setting my intentions for how I would like to uh, spend my time during our days. That is really what I use this for. Anything that is very specific, like doctor's appointments and things go on my Google calendar and in my physical calendars. Um, but this is just like my ideal, how I would like for us to spend our time type of calendar. So um, the first thing that we start with is breakfast time. The kids get up around 7.30 and they work their way through their morning routine, which I'm not going to show you here, um, but it's really quite simple. Um, after they finish up their morning routine, my alarm goes off in our study hall space, our schoolroom, um, around 8 o'clock, and that means that it is time for breakfast um i have tea time on there but it's a tea time is actually not that time so <laughs> um it's breakfast time basically and our morning journaling after we eat like we wrap up our breakfast we move into story time um that is when i read whatever i kind of have found that i want to read to them to start the day um, a lot of times it's picture books. Sometimes it is snippets from things that I've read, whether it's an article 
or just in inside um, pages or highlighted pages from books I'm reading. That is what I consider story time. And sometimes it's not from books at all. It's actually a story <laughs> that I want to share with the kids. So um, that's story time and that get, that happens during our morning meeting. After that, I give us a good chunk of time for, you know, our story time and morning meeting. Um, and then I move into our morning walk. I started implementing this uh, several years ago um, as like a constant and I love it. I will never go back <laughs> because it has just been so good because you do homeschool and life kind of in the walls of your home, which we love. There's just been so many challenges with trying to figure out like what signifies starting our day. And um, this is just really works for us. Just being able to step outside of the door and head out for a walk is great. If we can't walk, then we do our workout inside um, or we do it outside. Um, it's just been a great thing to implement. After we move through our workout and morning walk oh you'll see that that <laughs> that time block is actually belongs it actually belongs to our health and fitness um calendar but then we move right back into the green blocks and we move on to devotion and binder um brain and logic work and then we end that off with a quiet reading time um we move on to language arts which i have a nice little chunk um basically a 45 minute block and then we move into math um, and that's another 45 minute to an hour block and then right into history which is another 45 minute block then to lunch then we move to science <laughs> then we move to our what we call electives or specials it's been this way for so long and it just works out so well there's four main blocks or specials that i like to keep as a part um, of our homeschool days and as you can see here um mondays is writing i mean that started since they were very very little i mean basically the beginning uh we've always done like a mail day monday so mondays have always been our designated you know writing days clearly we write any other time that we want as well but this is our like designated writing time um tuesdays we have geography wednesdays is our science lab and thursdays is history and then we don't uh really have a more scheduled routine on friday that's like our that's mainly our day for filming and memory keeping and just letting whatever we want to fall here fall here after we make our way through our specials, then we move on to our projects. Um, I guess I could explain at a different time if you're interested how I um, have determined the difference between like an elective, quote unquote, or a special, quote unquote, and a project. But there are certain things I really want us to kind of put our hands to, and it's been a constant around here. And on Mondays, it's photography. Tuesdays, it's culinary arts. But actually, that should say engineering. <laughs> So um, engineering thinking is a really important part of our homeschool lives. So that goes there. And then art and music. Um, on Wednesday is just, I leave a nice block of time for science for us to explore whatever we decide to get into. And then history, I mean, and then Thursday is actually our day for culinary arts and cooking. So that actually needs to be updated. I'm not sure <laughs> why I don't have that there, but that's what goes in that spot. And then right beneath, right beneath that, we kind of end things off with our read aloud time and or literature like pull out. Um, we do have a few brave writer um literature singles that we use if they apply if not then we just do our own thing which is what we've been doing for years um and i have found a sweet spot um for us to end off with our reading time because sometimes we can get really carried away with reading time also we all like really look forward to it together as a family so i just thought that it would be a better fit to end the day with it instead of getting too distracted by it um at the beginning of the day and the kids just wanting to spend the entire day like reading um 
I found that it's better to be like a reward at the end of the day. Then we actually end the day off with an end of day meeting where we just kind of like quickly meet and discuss how the day went, what we want to change, um, what we want to keep. It's just a nice way to like express gratitude for the time we got to spend that day. Then after that, this time around, I have a block that is scheduled for chatting things out or figuring things out for Cameron's eighth year gap year. And so that's a whole nother, that's a whole other video that I do need to catch up on. Um, another thing I have found, I will say friends, is that ending my day with some organizing and decluttering has helped me so much. There's just so much like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to explain it well, but there's a certain type of energy, like this exhausting energy that gets built up and like, I don't know, like <laughs> I could just completely just be deflated by the end of the day, working through our plans on our schedules for the day. And I think that I found my sweet spot in that space because in the past it's, I think it's more like similar to a witching hour. You know what they call that? Um, isn't that what they call it when you're when you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home parent? It's like that hour where you've done all that you could do, okay? <laughs> okay, and now you just need to be done. Anyway, but um, that's just been a struggle for me when I finish off and it's like I go into some sort of hibernation and can't get anything else accomplished. And I think what I found that is really helpful for me is to have like a block of time that's designated to like organizing and decluttering. For some reason, it helps me to get out this odd kind of not nervous energy, but something that helps me to just move from one space to the next and then move over into other things that I need to get done, work that I need to get done, whatever else I need to get done. It helps me in my transition to go ahead and put like organizing and decluttering in that spot right before dinner. So they generally give me my like hour or so to organize, declutter, pick things up. And that really helps me to feel like nice and fresh for the next part of my day. So this is getting really heavy. I'm sorry. I don't want this to be super lengthy. That is what it is. That is our schedule. I will show you what it looks like on paper as well. Do you guys want to see it on paper or on my iPad? I don't know. I will show you in their binders. Basically the same thing that is in my iPad is in print it out and in their binders. This is what it looks like in his binder. It is basically the same thing, just translated um, and a little bit more fleshed out for them to be able to check through as they move along. And so we've had one of these corresponding checklists um, that is basically just another way to communicate what is in my iCal, basically. <laughs> so this is what he pretty much tries to work towards doing. He starts with AM work in the devotional, the binder, the brain and logic, the quiet read, to language arts, to math, to history, to science, to our electives, all the way to our projects at the bottom. It's tweaked and slightly different for each one of them if they have a little bit of something different going on, but it's very similar for each of them. This is the checklist that they just work through. Um, as the week goes on, what I did this year, because I planned the complete year out and I have a little bit more, I go into more detail um, depending on which week it is. And so for that specific week, um, this gets printed out and the back of their checklist is the plan. So that way they are able to see what I have kind of planned out for them to get into for the week and that will get printed and go right here. So if they need to know the particulars, that's where it will be. And generally people like to call it reverse planning where you just write out what you actually um, work on for that day. I don't necessarily consider it reverse planning. I just consider it documenting. So when I do print this out for them for the week, it will list where they should be next based on what they did the week before. So that is basically what the schedule looks like.
Are you, what are you trying to cut up? <laughs> yes, so this is their checklist. It corresponds with the schedule that's in my iCal. And then this year they are using the daily slides that help to just kind of walk them through this entire thing, just in a slightly easier way. I'll give you a tiny little sneak peek of what those slides look like, and then I will share about it in another video coming up, I guess, next. All right. I basically wanted the slides this year because there were some times where they would come to me and say things like, what's next? Even though we've already established a plan based off of what they want to accomplish and the goals that they want to achieve, um, you know, sometimes they get stuck in the day wondering what is next and I wanted to be able to communicate with them without having to use my like actual words in the day if that makes any sense so this way it gave me a good way to fill it in the the you know when I have my little end of the day meeting with myself in my little teacher corner um, I can write out anything I want to communicate to them for the next day and then they're able to just kind of read through that um, independently without having to come to me throughout the day um, and I just find that it's gonna make it's making for better communication uh, through the days so this is I know I said too many words <laughs> so <laughs> So these are the slides that they are able to use and tap through and work their way through the day. And it makes it really easy for me to just add what I would need to add to them and move along to the next day. I can walk through these and give you a little walkthrough of how I made them in the next video if you want. So stay tuned. Do I say stay tuned for that? <laughs> Anyway, so you guys can catch this in the next video. So I'm enjoying this little back to school vibe for the next few weeks as I'm able. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to include in these videos moving forward. I hope my hand is not shaky. This is heavy. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to learn. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe!